how to love someone like you. How can you so great and holy receive the worship of someone like me? All I have seems insignificant and small, but I freely give it all to you.
Come on, put your hands together and give God a good praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, team. Here I am to worship you and to give you all the honor. Amen. 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 Everybody with your Bibles in your hand, let's do our confession. This is my Bible. I am who it says I am. This book calls me an overcomer, and that's who I am. Today I shall be taught the infallible, unchanging word of God. So my mind is alert. My heart is receptive as I gladly receive the word today. I believe that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this, this day. We thank you for everything that you've sent for this day. We thank you that we have what you need, what we need in this day. And now we bless you and we honor you. And Holy Spirit, take us to where we need to be in this message, in this word teaching time, that your people would be edified and lifted and exhorted, challenged and changed. And God, we thank you for the victory we have through Jesus Christ, our Lord. We thank you that the blood covers us in every situation. We thank you that we have more than enough. And we thank you that better is coming. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. Today we're going to talk from the subject, You've Got Better. I've been mentioning it every, I mentioned it every time I got up today. You've got better. I used to work better. Somewhere or another. You've got better. You've got better. Sometimes worldly situations can become so oppressive that they force an unexpected depression. And sometimes you don't even know you're in the throes of depression, but it's, it's on you. Depression sometimes goes unnoticed at first. It starts with little things that don't get attention. Little things. And then it goes on and it, it eventually grows to an I don't care anymore attitude. And really it is symptomatic of, of, of depressive behavior or depressive mental status. This, this behavior continues until it's hard to be productive or move forward. When you are oppressed and depressed, it's hard to move forward. And sometimes you just say, I'm down. And when you get down, you can't seem to move and get up and, 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 and get going. But today I come to not only address that as, as one area, but, but to talk about the word, and as usual, the word has something to say to your hearts regarding this issue as it relates to even in a down place, you have better things coming. You've got better. Now, you're going to think I'm talking about one kind of better, but I'm going to tell you what the better things are. But first, better means more excellent manner with more skill, wisdom, and virtue. More excellent manner, with more skill, wisdom, and virtue. Then better comes with advantage and success. Better is, I got the advantage. Better is, I'm a success. And sometimes out of a lot of failure, 
then comes a success. And I wanted to encourage people, hang on till you get to success. Because one day the no will turn to a yes or move to a different place. How I many of you know I'm right about that? Even if, a, if it's a no on your job that you've been trying to, to get into, you, after a while, situations will shift. And you won't have to even ask for it anymore. They'll tell you, come, consider this position. And sometimes the new position doesn't come without challenges because it, the, the, the enemy doesn't want you to have it. So sometimes when you get into the new or the better, there comes a squeeze. Sometimes you have to do two jobs. Sometimes when you get to where you're going, the new set of people don't like you because they wanted their friend to get the job. But it doesn't change God's will toward you when God has decided that you will be a success, you will get the advantage, and you will be better. Amen. Amen. How many rather have God on their side? All right. All right. We're going to look at better as it relates to who you are and who you can be in the Lord. Well, here comes our scripture that, that's the foundation for our, 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 our lesson today. And it's Hebrews 6, 9 through 10, New King James Version. And basically, I operate out of New King James and I go to Amplified or NASB and I'll tell you. And it says there, but, beloved, we are confident of better things. Everybody say confident. confident. Of better things. Concerning you. Yes, things that accompany salvation. Things that accompany salvation. Though we speak in this manner, for God is not unjust to forget your work and labor of love, which you have shown toward his name, in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. You have ministered and you continue to minister. Come on. That said a whole lot in there. Amen? Now, the writer of Hebrews shares this. We are encouraged of better things concerning you, right in that scripture. And the question becomes, what are the better things, Pastor? The answer is, again, right in the scripture. The better things are the things that accompany salvation. Write that down. We're going to make it plain. See, y'all thought I was talking about better houses, better car, better, better clothes, better, more money, you know. That will come. But I'm talking about specifically today the things that accompany salvation. And these things become everlasting things. Number one. Grace. Grace. Grace is a better thing that accompanies salvation. Grace is a better thing. Well, let's, let, let, let's go back to the foundation and talk about what grace is just quickly. Grace is special favor or privilege. What does it come to do? It comes to assist you in your walk with the Lord. See, a lot of what happens in your life as a believer, or it will happen when you become a believer, is that you need grace, you need special privilege to, to, to exercise and carry out the will of God for your life. It also takes grace to walk with the Lord. It's not always easy. And we think it's easy until a challenge hits us. And then we go into all kind of different places, and, but you need grace. Yes. 
in this instance, grace that accompanies salvation is the quickening or the igniting spirit of God. When, when you get saved, grace kicks in or special privilege in the extent that it ignites the spirit of God in you. It ignites it. Why? Because you've got to become more spiritual than natural. And as long as you keep trying to straddle between the natural and the spiritual, you'll be divided. But you've been given access to move into the spiritual because you, you aligned yourself up with, with Jesus Christ through accepting him. And so, so this grace accompanies salvation. So you've ignited the spirit of God. So therefore you are able to walk in the spirit. You're able to walk in the spirit. You say, I don't have the help you need. I disagree. You do. You are able to walk in the spirit. How do I know that? With this understanding, Paul jumps in in Galatians 5, 16 and says, I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So you're telling me every time the flesh wins over, and and, and 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 you move into the lust battle, and 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 I'm, I'm not victorious there. It means that you didn't walk in the spirit. Wow. You didn't walk in the spirit. You walked in the flesh. One will take over. But I'm saying again. Let me back up again. You have the spirit of God ignited on the inside of you the moment you got saved. So you are able to walk in the spirit. Because if you walk in the spirit, you shall not fulfill the what? The what? The lust of the flesh. That means the pining after, after sin. The longing and desire to be sinful. You don't just fall into sin. You lust first. You look first before you ever touch. Amen. Number two. Godly sorrow is a better thing that accompanies salvation. That, that last phrase I'm going to use with the rest of these. But the key being, number two, is godly sorrow. Godly sorrow is good. But we live in a world where people aren't sorry enough. They aren't sorry for anything. They do it brazenly. And they say, this is how I am. You know that's me. Anybody ever heard people excuse themselves? That's just the way I am. Well, that's brazen because there is no godly sorrow inside of you. But, but godly sorrow accompanies salvation. When you get saved, you do feel sorry for stuff. At some point. If you cut up, you feel sorry. If you tell somebody off, and you knew that you got out of control for a minute, you need to acknowledge that thing, say, I cut up, I acted up, I showed, my, well, I, I showed out. <laughs> I have to be so careful. How many know I'm right about that? How many know you get rubbed wrong? And it bothers you? You at a counter, and you trying to line up with your salvation, but your temper just kicked in. Now you saw me standing there first and you jumped right in front of me. It takes something to, to not say something. It takes something to not use your fingers in the car if somebody cut you off. And you know which finger I'm talking about. 
take something. Take something not to speed up, catch up with them, just so you can give them the eye. Oh, Lord, I'm hitting a lot of stuff. I don't know where that stuff comes from. But I know you all don't do it. I just, you know, I've seen other people do it. And one of them was in the mirror. Amen. What is godly sorrow? Godly sorrow is produced by a supernatural work of grace on the heart. When you operate in the special privilege of your salvation, godly sorrow enters your heart. What is godly sorrow? It's another name for sadness when something is wrong. Sadness. Godly sorrow is not the same thing as natural conviction. When you are godly sorrow, folks, it, it, it comes from a place in your heart that, 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 that lines up with who you are in God. So you don't want to line up wrong. You don't want to offend God. So when godly sorrow kicks in, you start viewing things from the God perspective and what God has done for you through Jesus Christ on the cross to save you. This melts the heart to understand the love of God for us. We, and then we realize how valuable we are to God. When you realize what God did for you, you start thinking, I don't want to let you down because I am valuable to you. The point is, is that you sent Jesus for me. Obviously, I am valuable to you. See, and, and we got a lot of people that keep underrating their salvation and their value from a godly perspective. And you keep trying to prove yourself to somebody that will never be God. We spend a lot of time trying to impress people that will never be God. Why are you trying to impress people that's on the same level as you are? Lord. Godly sorrow produces godly affection. You become affectionate. And don't tie affection with sensuality. You become affectionate. You want to do right. You want your heart to be pierced when you, you fall in short. You don't want it to be said, this is the way I am. Just accept me. Godly sorrow produces a humble submission to the Lord. Become low. Amen. Number three. Supplication. Supplication is a better thing that accompanies salvation. It's a better thing. Supplication. And supplication is an earnest, humble request to the Lord. Supplication. I come unto him, but I'm coming to him with an honest, Request. I'm not demanding that he does anything, but I have the right to ask him. Come on. Enter in. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and to his with praise. Enter in. Come on in. 
And when you get into the presence, there's fullness there. So you might as well ask for what you need. Supplication happens when prayer is met by an understanding of the grace or special favor of God on our life. We understand that I am able to come before God with my request because it, 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 it aligns up with my salvation. It's a fruit of salvation. It's something that I can do. I can enter into his presence and make specific requests. And unlike the Old Testament, I've got an extra key that I can use to get in. I have the use of the name Jesus. In Jesus' name, I'm in. Whatever you do in word and deed, do all in the name of Jesus. The right response to blessings is this. When you supplicate, when you make a request and you get blessed, these are the right responses to supplication. And, and, and the blessings. Blessings should make you want to praise and worship God. When you get blessed, you ought to want to praise. When you get a check, you praise. When you get extra money, you pray. When something new happens, you pray. You get in the mirror, nobody's watching, and, and you got that new outfit, you try it on, and you, you just, the first thing you do is turn in all directions to see if it's good everywhere. And then you, you might do a little dance. Hey, that's all right. Every lady, after she gets her hair done, she worships. Every one of y'all, you're going to do something. You're going to do this or this. You're going you to worship when you get your hair done. During this quarantine, the first time Pastor Marcy was able to get, the, she was so happy, I think she run out the door. Because she said, I can't stand it no longer. I say, baby, you all right? And she just looked at me. I think she growled. But she was so happy to get in the chair and, 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 and get something done until, till, till I, I know it produced a worship. <laughs> Didn't it, babe? She's shaking now. Why is she telling me no? So blessing should make you want to praise and worship God. When you get blessed, don't hold back. Worship God. Tell him thank you. Shout, scream. Do, do what you need to do. Amen. Anybody know what I'm talking about? about? About excited when God does something for you and we try to hold because we don't want anybody to think we're crazy. They already know just get crazier. Blessing should make you want to give. When you get blessed, something ought to say, I need to bless somebody else. Blessing should make you want to praise. And here we are in supplication. So it starts to cycle back over again. When you get blessed, you, 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 you start supplicating all over again. God, now that I'm blessed, can, can we do this? Can this happen? Can that happen? Can we open up the way for something else? Show me what to do with this. Show me what to do with my money. Show me what to do with how I've gotten blessed. God, I thank you for what you're doing. When you get blessed, you want to pray. Does that make sense? You want to pray. Your thanksgiving is a part of a thank you, God. Thank you, you answered my prayer. Thank you, you met the need. Thank you, you canceled that debt. It makes you want to pray. Come on. And if it doesn't, if something is wrong with you. You have no, let's go back up to the other one, godly sorrow. Whew. 
Number four. Brokenness is a better thing that accompanies salvation. Oh, Pastor, I thought it was going to be something else. Brokenness, brokenness is a thing, a better thing that accompanies salvation. Psalm 5117 in the Amplified says this. My only sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. And in parenthesis, it says there about the contrite heart, broken with sorrow for sin, thoroughly penitent or repentant. Such, O oh God, you will not despise. In every life that is saved, there will be a period of brokenness where we submit our shortcomings to the Lord. At these times, we bring all our broken pieces to him with this request. You are the potter, I am the, play, I am the clay. Make me over again. Pull the pieces back together. You are able to pull me back together. When you get broken. How many of you have experienced some type of brokenness in your salvation walk? You've been broken some way or another. Either through people, through circumstances, through things not operating the way you think. And, and, and disappointments, you were broke up. You were saddened. You were tore up about it. But brokenness accompanies salvation because in the salvation part is the ability to know and understand that when you are broken, God is able to help and pull you back together. So that's better. And God says, when your heart is broken because you are, are unrepentant, he said, once you repent and come back to me, you start moving on the other side of the healing incline. You get better. You get better and better. But you must know that, that a part of your walk is that my breaking is, 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 is due sometime because I need to repent. I need to repent. I did tell a lie. I didn't do it right. It wasn't where it needed to be. Repent. Because it's a place of brokenness. And out of brokenness comes insult. And the longer you stay broken, you have the potential to damage somebody else. Broken people Break other people. That's why if you're broken, you can't come to go to nobody else that's cracked up as much as you for help. Just because they're your friend or they're your family, they cannot help. Whew. But with that, I say be made whole. Be made whole. Be made whole. But then here is the blessing of that whole Psalm 51, 17. It says, Oh God, you will not despise the person who, who, who acknowledges their broken area because of shortcomings and repent. You will not despise it. And if God doesn't despise it, that means he approves of it. So once it meets God's approval, it means healing is there. How many of you want him to approve? So repent quickly. 
Don't let stuff fester. I, I know people, they, they get sideways and some, some people say, I get in my feelings. And really, that's their ghost to spot. They stay in their feelings. And so everything gets filtered through that feeling, the lens of the feeling. And no matter what that person does, it, it's, it's a feeling thing, and you can't get to them. And it starts becoming a dishonor thing. Even when you, when, 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 when you are, 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 are broken uh, uh, with somebody, you can't honor them. If you even broken with your pastor, you can't even receive from them. Oh, God. Oh, God. And people have walked in and out of this building, and they couldn't receive from me because they never acknowledged where they were broken, and they didn't want to talk about it because they were in their feeling, and they thought they had a right to their feeling, and they did, but your feelings didn't help you because you never got to a place where you say, Maybe I need to repent of the way I'm feeling so I can talk to them about how I'm feeling so we can both get better. Brokenness. Brokenness leads to dishonor. And you can't honor what you can't hear. You can't listen. So you dishonor. And I could be talking, I could read the scripture. He didn't read that right. I could give you the best truth and everybody agree. You sit there. I don't know why he said that. Because everything is getting filtered through your brokenness. Are you all listening? And sometimes the best person you can help with that thing is you. You can't fix the other person. And you need to stop thinking about what they're feeling about you. Because you'll stay broke up over that. They don't like me. They might not. But you don't like them either. <laughs> Does that make sense? It's brokenness. But God says, if you come to me broken and with a contrite heart, a heart that's repentant, I won't despise that. So I'll approve it, and I'll make you better. Somebody say better. Somebody say, I've got to have better. And that's in your life. You've got to have better. Don't settle for less. Don't settle for all the ill stuff like it's normative. It's not normal. What's normal is you have the better things that line up with your salvation that come from God. My God. Is anybody getting this today? Number five is faith. Faith is a better thing that accompanies salvation. And this is just not any old faith you just believing for something. This is faith that is inserted in the recesses of your heart that makes you believe God does exactly what he said. See, see, before you can believe God for something, you have to believe in God. And that's the problem. We got a gimme mentality, but we don't have a believe in mentality. Do you believe God just because he's God? And when you believe God, you have to believe that God is all and all. That he can handle any situation. You got to believe God will never lie to you. God will never be unjust to you. God will never be unrighteous to you. God will hurt you. God will step back and let you hurt yourself. But he won't hurt you. He won't hurt you to prove he's God. He's going he gonna to be God whether you get healed or whether you die in disease. He don't have to prove he's God to you. 
but the but the belief I'm talking about and the faith I'm talking about that lines up with the salvation is the faith that I believe in God with everything in me. And that's what's not happening in church today. We got churchy folk that don't believe in God because when they get outside of church, they do everything else but believe in God. How are you a Christian and you don't believe in God? You don't believe he'll make the way so you make it. You don't believe that he'll help pay your bills so you rob somebody. You got to believe in God. And this faith also, not only do you believe in God, I'm going to hit the part, I'm going to hit the part that, 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 that the world doesn't want to, to, to say. You have to believe that Jesus is God. That Jesus is God's son. And that he died on a cross one day. Three days later, he was raised up. Same body. He stayed on earth for a while, and then he went to be with the Father. You got to believe that Jesus is God's son and that Jesus is God. You got to believe that. They want you to pray prayers and not say in Jesus' name. They want you to open sessions of Congress and not say in Jesus' name because we don't want to offend anybody. Well, you offend me with everything else that you try to give me that, 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 is not, that doesn't line up with my belief. When did it get politically incorrect for me to say in Jesus' name? I never forget getting called into, I was going to do the invocation for a, a, a college and, and they called me in uh, 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 after, after the Muslim dean, who knew I was a Christian preacher, said, talk to the VP. And, and I got called to the office. And he asked me, uh, 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 Pastor, what, what, what are you going to pray? <laughs> Y'all know I played with that, don't you? I said, what am I going to pray? What do you mean? I, I want to be clear. And then he said, are you going to pray the Lord's Prayer? I could have went on a theological trip and said, no. The Lord's Prayer doesn't say in Jesus' name. Second of all, the Lord's Prayer is a recipe for how to pray. When Jesus gave it to the disciples and said, after this manner. Well, I try to cook. And I have never made a peach pie by laying the written recipe in the stove. And then open it an hour late. <laughs> so I told him, I said, good brother, I said, I'm a Christian minister. And when you invite me, you invite my ministry. And I open prayers in Jesus' name, and I close them in Jesus' name. I, he got so embarrassed, he said, okay, that'll be fine. And that's exactly what I did. But the funny thing was, when I prayed it, the graduates all over the room because I don't pray with my eyes closed. I used to. 
but I've been pastoring 30 years. So. <laughs> I looked, I looked out, and those graduates in their Catholic guys, that was such a nice day for me. To thine own self be true. You don't have to go along just to get along. And then, let me wind this on up. Hebrews 11 and 6 says, But without faith it's impossible to please him. For he who comes to the Father must believe that he is. Just what I said. You, you got to believe he is. If you're going to operate in faith, you got to believe he is. And, and, and not only do you believe that he is, that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Now, to have faith in the Lord, you must believe a few things. That he exists, he had a body, etc., etc. Two, that he rewards those who seek him. That ought to make you believe right away that he's a rewarder. Come on. He's a rewarder of them who seek him. Revelations 22 and 12, NASB says this, and I'm rushing on. Behold, I am coming quickly. Jesus talking. And my reward is with me to render or give to every man according to what he has done. You get rewarded for not what somebody else did, but for what you have done in the kingdom of God. So if you don't do nothing, don't look for nothing. Finally, Hebrews 6 and 10 gives you this encouraging assurance. And it's from the same passage that we just tore apart and dealt with. And, and, and I want to read it again as we started the, the, the message with. For God is not unjust to forget your work and labor of love which you have shown toward his name in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister First of all, let's get it straight. It is unjust, unrighteous for God to forget, period. <laughs> he will not forget your work of labor of love. So if you know this, don't slump, don't lag. Don't offer excuses. Don't be a slacker. Trust him all the way to the end. Stop complaining. Get up off that pity pot. The seat is raggedy from you hanging on it. <laughs> and trust God. For God is not unjust. What is he not unjust? To? Hey. He not on just to forget you. So why do you keep acting like he forgot? It would be unrighteous for him to forget. It's not in his nature to forget. He knew what he did for you yesterday. So why would he forget you today and not have your tomorrow taken care of? God is not unjust. We unrighteous and we unjust, but that's not God's whole card. <laughs> you better trust God today. Don't play a game. Don't pretend you in and you ain't. If you're not going to trust him, don't. But if you are going to trust him, know this, that God is not unjust. To forget. This next part, you got to make sure you got some, your work. And labor of love. Which you have shown first not to yourself, but to. <laughs> Why you minister to the saints. And do minister. The do minister is those that ain't 
with the saints. Do not miss your blessing. Hebrews 8 and 6, last scripture. But now, everybody say, but now. It says he, meaning Jesus, has obtained a more excellent ministry in as much as he is also mediator of a better covenant which was established on better promises. A better, first one was a better what? Based on what? You've got better today. You're not lacking. You've got better today. You got a better covenant and better promise. Think of how good the promise was to Abraham. That was mind blowing. And you telling me what you've given me in this day and age is better than what you gave to Abraham. You got a better promise and a better covenant. Are y'all out there? You sitting on better and don't understand that I'm walking and living in better based on the fact that I line up with God through his son, Jesus Christ. Blessings to you today. My God. (laughs) Come on, anybody know you got better? Lift them hands up and thank God. I got better today. (laughs) Thank you, God. I got better today. (laughs) I've got better. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Even during this pandemic time, God is going to show himself powerful on your behalf. Because you got a better covenant based on better promises. You got better today. So rest there today. Lift them hands up. Give them a good praise in this house. Open your mouths behind them masks and give them a good praise. Come on, I don't care what it look like. You got better. I don't care what it feel like. You got better. Because you dare to throw your plight with the Lord Jesus Christ and God. You believe him today. Come on, come on. You, you, you know you got better. You got more than enough. You got everything that you need in this time. Oh God, we thank you. We thank you. All over the room, put your hand on your chest and say, thank you for giving me better. And tell them, God, today, I believe in you with my whole heart. Thank you, Jesus. Put them hands together. Give them a prayer. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. He's not slack concerning his promises toward you. Thank you, Lord. You got better. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you for how good you are and that you are a keeper. God, thank you for a lesson on better things. Thank you for looking to Hebrews that showed us the things that line up with our salvation. Thank you that we were on board to to hear and receive so we can get better. Thank you for the word that says, but faith comes by hearing. hearing by the word of God. Thank you. Bless you, God. Thank you. Amen, amen.
Praise the Lord again. To all of our listeners, we thank God for you, and we encourage your financial support of this ministry. We are here to bless you, and know that the Lord will bless your giving. You can use PayPal by going to our website at dovechurch.org slash giving, which takes you to our PayPal page. We appreciate your sharing this time with us today. God bless you.